Good morning and welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Um, so this morning we have a few question and answers. So before I go into question and answers, I wanted to um, talk a little bit about uh, some reflections that I did on the basis on uh, many of your wonderful comments and uh, feedbacks that everybody has shared. So uh, this, today's actual title is The Meditation on Clear Light While Asleep, Question and Answer. So basically it's more question and answer. So um, I know like looking at all the beautiful comments that all of you have done, so I can see some of you are having great experiences and some of, of you are having, you know, some improvement, some development, and some of you are having some challenges, and obviously that is very, very normal, you know, in, uh, uh, so we are so many people practicing and from so many different backgrounds and so many different uh, situations in our life and so many different level of understanding practice and maturity of the practices. So obviously, there are going to be many different uh, experiences, response. But one thing I would say that is um, that we all are recognizing something. We are recognizing that importance of the sleep yoga practice, recognizing importance to s uh, sleep well, uh, recognizing how sleep is important, how resting well is important. And, uh, and so also recognizing that how badly we sleep, how, how challenging time we have in the sleep, how maybe sometimes how bad quality sleep we have, how many different kind of, uh, how many ignorance that we have before we go to sleep, or how many unprocessed thoughts and emotions that we carry on in our sleep. So we also recognizing our conditions, weakness, problems, uh, and that is in that it in itself. I think is very important because uh, recognizing that it's something that now it's a beginning to change something. Because if you don't recognize who are, who you are not, you will not recognize who you are. If you don't recognize your conditions, you will not recognize your liberations. If you don't recognize your weakness. It will be difficult to recognize your strength. So somehow, willing to face, willing to recognize, willing to acknowledge, willing to accept, accommodate, and work, and process, and clear our conditions and emotions, weaknesses, I think is a fundamental, uh, very, very important. I think, I feel that many of you already are in a good process, that you are doing that, even though you're facing challenges, you're recognizing your challenges, how often you face those exact same challenges, but you totally ignore next morning, don't, not even reflect on it, not even trying to do anything about it. So, so I think in some sense, um, all good. So what we're trying to do is, uh, we're trying to sleep better, we're trying to rest deeper, we're trying to uh, be more joyful when we wake up. We're trying to have, be in a better mood when we wake up. So some sense of uh, uh, changes in a positive are, I think, is happening to all, all of you, on all of us. So also that you can see that many of us, or many of you, that uh, may, very often uh, an average sense that we have the type of dreams that we have, it's a very mundane dream, a very samsaric dream, uh, very, in a way, sometimes very negative dream. There are some research findings that says that the people who have positive dreams and then later it turn out to be more negative. People, who, uh, So there are more people who dream turn from positive to negative than negative to positive. So basically change from negative dream to a positive dream, unaware dream to aware dream, it's much harder than the other way around. So, so, but I clearly see 
that you know if you look at yourself you can clearly see that very frequently we have a lot of uh, dreams that which is very much mundane and samsaric dream in which we are totally lost totally disconnected uh, and so you, you if you look at yourself if you listen to around you you see that you, you hear that but if you look at now now a couple of nights or a couple of maybe weeks since we have been engaging in these practices you can begin to look some of you are changing already changing means that you might be dreaming a little bit more spiritual practices more more uh, uh, sacred symbols uh, dreaming temples dreaming sacred images dreaming uh, being with right people being with your teachers mentors your friends um, and then also kind of recognizing uh, certain dreams that you have is if it's very difficult or fearful you're recognizing them as a dream uh, so basically uh, there is much more changes even in your samsaric dreams, even your in your conditional dreams or normal dreams. There's images are changing, the stories are changing, the feelings are changing. So the ch these changes are also brought simply because we are in conversation right now. I'm right now talking with all of you about dreams. I'm talking about sleep. I'm talking about our weaknesses, our strength. I'm talking about our conditions and our potentiality. I'm talking about our mundane dream, then our more spiritual oriented dream, a dream of fear rather than dream, you know, dream of hope rather than the dream of fear. So these, there are already changes in your dream. So I think that's also something that's important to recognize. Especially, I, mean, I know like not all of you have, but those you do have, those you do recognize is changes in your dream, that is also important to you recognize, oh, something is changing in my dream. I begin to, you know, how, uh, for example, for me, when I dream about my teachers, when I dream about temple, when I dream, dream about uh, during in retreat, uh, practicing, uh, playing instruments and those are dreams are di much better dream than that than I am driving uh, stuck in a traffic and and um, um, stuck in a kind of difficult situations in in my ordinary uh, life <clears throat> so so you can I was just want trying to point out that even in our samsaric dreams are changing even your ordinary samsaric dreams are changing so so some people try say, say something like, you know, uh, one of students, Balbina Ray, uh, she was sharing her dream and uh, her sleep yoga practice. So last 15 days that uh, some health challenges and uh, 15 days that she uh, did not sleep well. The yesterday was first time in last 15 days she slept well so so just think about that sleeping well it does not necessarily mean lucid dream does not mean a dream of I say clear light sleep does not mean anything but at least sleeping well because of the practices you are you're trying to do that is very important message uh, because most of the time throughout the day our state of mind state of emotion state of how we see the world we are we are kind of different we see differently we interact differently produce different kind of stresses and karm karmas uh, patterns we produce and so as a result of that when we go to sleep we forget about the practice we just having a difficult to even go to sleep properly sleep better sleep with more clarity, sleep with more calmness, peacefulness, even which face just not challenges to have that. So, so not to always think about very big goals, but think about some small steps toward that big goal. I think that's very, very important. So uh, Balbina's, I think it was kind of very important. So after 15 days, you are having first time go to sleep. You know, wonderful.
just thank to the sleep goddess, thank to the these practices, thank thanks to the cyber sangha collective that we are all supporting each other. So, so these are like some. I think it's very very important to 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 reflect that. So we, of course, that sometimes there are things that you can do. For example, um, s time to time uh, we having a difficult time to sleep, just not because of our practice or any condition. Sometimes even just uncomfortable bed or very disturbing day or even simple as too much food. That's what happened to me yesterday, you know, um, kind of uh, evening socializing with some friends and um, having a little bit, they order quite a bit of food and uh, the hungry ghost in me kind of gra gra grabbing those foods and so uh, I can clearly see that I ate too much. So uh, just simple as that. Uh, as a result of that, and I uh, just having, you know, just it's kind of disturbed my sleep a little bit. So just simple as that. So sometimes uh, avoiding uh, heavy foods, uh, too much alcohol, uh, too much uh, painful conflicting conversations, or too much maybe checking with the mails or uh, emails when you you know you are not expecting some good news is, or you know, you know you are you are you are having this ongoing unresolved conversation with somebody or something like that. So just just take a break from those things. Heavy food, take a break from heavy food, heavy people, heavy feelings, heavy situation. Just take a break before, and uh, just think about going to sleep as a very a sacred journey. Uh, entering into the sacred temple, uh, uh, which is your heart is like a sacred temple, and uh, uh, entering into that sacred space and sacred light, uh, which is your inner space and uh, inner awareness. So those are, I think, very very important to kind of uh, think. So it's just sometimes very simple, but I think it's kind of very important points. So maybe I'll just go uh, through a few of the questions here that people have. Uh... So, so somebody says, I'm practicing every night, but I notice it is difficult for me to fall asleep easily. Maybe I'm too concentrated on the practice or I put too much effort or is it kind of grasping so so basically um i think uh, anything in life don't to put too much effort anything in life think about that At places where you to put too much effort in your life right now they are difficult think about places you're trying to put too much in your practices in meditation, they don't work well. Or same way, when you before you go to sleep, you put too much effort in your practice, it will not work. Particularly when you're trying to go to sleep. So no. So think about this. If when you have to visualize something before you go to sleep, I say something like this: um, see it, like if I'm trying to see an image, a sphere of light, or peaceful see it, feel it, become it, and be free from it, dissolve it. Like when you visualize a, a, a white A when you, before you go to sleep. You see the A, you feel the A, you become A, that means you become that awareness, and you let go of that image, and means you allow yourself to fall asleep. So it's a very typical problem that people focus and put too much effort on on, on a symbol, and um, neither meditation work n definitely it will interfere your sleep. So don't fight with a, ah, or don't fight with the sacred image, don't fight with yourself, don't fight with the practice, and you will always lose if you do so. So, so yes, absolutely. 
and maybe you are maybe grasping too much, putting too much effort. Uh, so tr just trying to take it easy, calm down, and um, yeah, uh, and maybe just recognize then when you're doing that and just breathe it out. Breathe it out when you you see when you're breathing it out, sending the. I always say breathe it out uh, and to uh, all the. I say the tensions that you are feeling in that moment. Breathe out tensions that you are feeling in that moment. You recognize as in the process of going to sleep or in meditation. That's all you do. Second question. So I practice daily. Sometimes I fall asleep before I finish. Do I need to sleep in a lion pose on the right or left? Is it okay to have pillow between my hand and head. So, so first, um, so if you, f I don't know what exactly you mean by saying I fall asleep before the practice. So somehow during the practice you should fall asleep. So somehow last point of attention, last image, last feeling, last contact should be those you know, practice your practice. That that space, that awareness, or that f freedom, that light should be the last contact. Or, or so 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 some sense. I think it's okay. Maybe some sense related with the first question. So don't put too much effort. And the last images, as long as the last images are the images that you are supposed to focus on or last thoughts and feelings and emotions are that you are supposed to have, then it's okay to fall asleep. It's okay to lose it. Because your concept, your, your awakened mind is losing that connection, but more like unconscious awareness, in a more subtle awareness is continuously remain, uh, remains connected. So don't, uh, I think one should not worry about it. So the third question, when you say sphere of light at the third eye, do you mean the uh, sphere of awareness, warmth, space, or light like a f flame, or light like a light bluff, b um, bulb? So, uh, so basically, when I say sphere of light, basically what in Tibetan we say tigle, and in, in Sanskrit we say bindu, like a, a small ball of light. Like a bulb, bulb, small, small bulb, you know, like a, could be maybe like a, like one of these things, right? But this is a little too big. But the small sphere of light, a small, a round one, and um, generally everything we, we we visualize like either is a symbol, syllable, or state of mind. Or light, or wind, whatever. When we visualize something, it basically it's it seems like saying that such energy exists in our body. Like uh, when we're saying, is such energy exist in there? And uh, because we cannot um, visually see that, or we cannot uh, experience fully through our uh, uh, mind. And so visual image actually helps to activate its intensity of feeling more so that we can experience something exists there. So these visual images, I think it's more like a support to it exists there or it's supposed to bring it into more like a life. So uh, sphere of light is basically, that's what it's trying to do is that in the third eye, there is that sense of uh, clarity, light and uh, so you are trying to, by visualizing that sphere of light, you are trying to bring that uh, clarity of expansion more in life. Um, so that before you go to sleep, you are not sleeping in your uh, sense of loss, you are not sleeping in ignorance, you are not sleeping in doubt, you are not sleeping in confusion, rather you are sleeping in that sense of a freedom, openness, which is that space which is illuminated by this sphere of light 
the energy that you are feeling in the forehead. So in some sense, I think simply that's what, that is what is happening and that's what you're trying to do. So the fourth question is, is the home meditation with the breathe uh, accompanying during the sleep? So basically, uh, the the whom so when we're doing this whom um, um, sending out from our nostril as a luminous whom. So is it? I think the question is that are you? It's breath is go, uh, breath is going out with it. So it does the breath is involved with the breath or not? I think that's what the question is. So in generally in the teaching it does not specific specify in a maju in a madha tantra it does not specify that it need to accompany with the breath or not. But I think um, do either way. But I think accompanying through, with the breath I think it's a it will be very good. I feel I I do try when asleep. For example, as I was mentioning that we are having kind of a little bit. Um, uh, interrupted my sleep a few times yesterday night and during that time whatever I just immediately I look inside myself and I see whatever discomfort is there uh, because of my physical condition um, and affecting my energy, affecting my energy, affecting my wind and my mind, affecting my dream. Uh, so if there is anything that I can detect something uh, in, in terms of the, my mind and emotions which is related with the wind, I can easily be conscious, be aware, not fight, not struggle, not get upset, but simply you know, breathe it out, simply breathe it out, clear it. You know, like I, if I, um, like in a room where I feel like it's hot, uh, suffocating, too much heat, dry, and uh, and I'm, I'm if I'm feeling it's I'm affecting me and I don't like it. Uh, when I notice that, instead of getting saying I hate this heat, I hate this temperature, um, getting angry, upset. No, I just recognize that. I just get up. I open my window, uh, and let a little fresh breeze come in, and 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 that's it. Just simple action of awareness in that moment it's necessary no emotion no negative emotion no struggle no effort is necessary at that moment simple action of awareness go back to sleep simple action of awareness will be when you notice something like that use your breath and breathe it out so yes the simple answer is yes and if you find it a little difficult, then don't worry about it. Just just visualize it. So the, the question number five is about. I wonder if action during sleep produces karmic seeds. In other words, is everything permitted during sleep, or? Our moral value valid. Our moral value valid. So of course, in a in a in a some sense that uh, I think uh, at least my opinion, moral value valid because uh, uh, any moment of your existence, either it's the day or night, either you're conscious or unconscious, either you're lucid or non-lucid dreams, every time there is a fact, it affects you. It affects your karma. It affects if it's a. For example, if you have a lucid dream, if you have a virtuous dream, if you are, have a compassion dream, if you have a dream of clear light, if those all have a, a positive karmic consequences, if those help to develop your meditation, your view, uh, or if those help to develop your. Um, uh, produce virtues, uh, merit. So if you're producing merit, if you're cultivating your wisdom, that means same way when you are doing something wrong or you are getting angry or you are upset with something, someone, then naturally it has a negative consequences. But the only thing is probably it's not the same level of effect. You know, if you're yelling at somebody, if you're yelling at your, I don't know, your boss, in sleep, 
you are you won't be fired or you won't have trouble with at least not very obvious where you will not have problem but if you do the same thing in your waking state in front of your boss you know you will be in trouble right so that the consequences are there but not the same way so i think the again the answer a simple answer, question, uh, answer for your question is there is consequences for whatever happens in your dream and your sleep so number 6 so i usually find practice like this very helpful in clearing of obstacles but the problem i am experiencing at the moment seems to grow more solid painful and stuck when i focus on them and trying to bring them to the point of uh, to the point of light in my forehead. So first of all, uh, I'm, I've never said and uh, that you need to, to uh, focus on uh, on those kind of uh, effort and negativity and bring into the light here. No. So uh, so it's important that uh, I clarify that that you you do want to be conscious of before you go to sleep because it's like a being aware you know you walk into the room you want for example if you go into your bedroom you wanted to make sure that your bed is there is not hundred thousand things on your bed all the laundry clothes are on your bed you wanted to um, you know a box is on the bed a computer is on your bed so you want to take out the computer the wires out the laundry is out uh, maybe some uh, cups and plates on your bed take out whatever whatever else on the bed you clean them out it's very natural to do same way when you're trying to go to sleep in just trying to be aware a little bit of in your body uh, your body is still calm calm enough or you are um, energy field is calm and peaceful enough or your mind is calm and peaceful enough if not then what what is there what discomfort is there uh, and just just sim it's like a very effortless way of kind of observing noticing discomforts in your body in your mind and through the practice through the awareness just breathing out as i said many times for example right this moment as i'm speaking as i'm speaking you're not going to the bed maybe you are in some some part of the world in europe the early people who go to bed early you might be in your bed already watching that's the nice thing about the facebook live right in during the teaching time and during the retreat we say no no feet toward the shrine but here you are lying down completely in your bed and nobody cares so you are lying down maybe you are already are um sleeping and you are noticing that uh, discomfort in your body or discomfort in your field of energy in your mind just just simply notice that or those you are not necessarily lying down in your bed but you know sitting upward listening to hear listen to me here so just this very moment, look inward, not particularly focus on me, look inward. What you're feeling. If there's any discomfort feelings, just notice but not fight breathe it out notice breathe it out notice breathe it out don't fight you don't have to even analyze and be aware of that stillness
that silence and rest like a baby in the loving arms of mother. The truth is your mother. The sacred space is your mother. You can never be you can never be you. You are always you. A recognizing you, your being, it's beautiful. Just resting there. Okay, so so I think what I'm trying to say is just recognizing the effort, letting go of those efforts. But obviously, if there is something that you feel, you feel like your ability to, uh, for example, let's say this way, a we, a, let's give an example of a person who is very good at ignoring things, who does not acknowledge one's pain, who does not acknowledge the conflict, uh, the disturbances one is feeling, one's pain, and who is able to ignore and go to sleep, of course bad sleep, bad dream, nightmare, but able, able to ignore and like to ignore and getting used to ignoring it and then not recognizing ignoring and having nightmare is a bad thing, not recognizing that, but recognizing when you're trying to work with it, when you feel a little bit challenged working with it, you feel it's a problem, but when you're ignoring it, having pro then have problem, you don't think that is a problem. You see, there are people like that. I repeat this again. There are people who ignores everything, they still have the problem, but then don't see that problem as much a problem. But when they are trying to face something, and they face some challenge in initially, and they see that as a problem. But you know, truth is, that is not a problem. Truth is, that is the beginning of resolving problem. The first one, ignoring and having problem, is a problem and will be problem continuously. And that is, I think, something that's important to recognize because, you know, it's a little bit harder probably in the beginning to confirm, but it's better in, in the long run, right? So, let's see. Um, okay, I think uh, maybe we can uh, do uh, a short practice here. Um, okay, maybe I just answer a few more questions. So somebody is saying, I wonder to whom do you pray? Uh, that's a question for me. Is asking yesterday, uh, I mentioned a little bit about Praying is a very important, and uh, and personally, of course, uh, you know, um, my re my personal relation to understanding and uh, value of prayer has increased over the years. There there was a time I did not pray very much. You know, there was a time I. So let's say this way, uh, that does not mean I did not practice. I practiced since I was around age 10, 11, sitting in a contemplation with my teacher, Yongzun Buche, when I was around 10 years old, uh, 11 years old. Um, I sat with uh, Yongzun Buche, Lobo Tenzin Amdarun Buche, uh, my teacher, and um, with whom, you know, in the evenings we used to sit in a, you know, in a room, uh, before go to bed, we used to meditate and uh, sometimes very, um, how you say, um, hot summer. And uh, as a very young age, it's kind of very hard to maintain, stay awake, and meditating and, and uh, abiding in the nature of mind. And I fall asleep. I bump my head into the window, and he could hear that you know somebody's bumping head onto the window, and then. You bump one time, and then you bump another time, and then he, he hears that, and he says, What a miserable meditation! Just go to bed! Why you are, why you are 
like uh, just forcing yourself. I said, okay, thank you, you know, I'll go to bed. So, so of course I meditated since that age. But praying means, in some sense, what I mean by praying is asking for something. You know, help me to find a job, help me to find this or do that. That kind of prayer, I, I, I did not do much. So, so somehow I did not feel so much in the need of some specific thing needed to happen. I did not feel so much need of some specific thing needed to happen in my life. I felt whatever things needed to happen in my life, they happened in my life. And sometimes more than what I expected happened in my life, I'm very grateful of my life, the flow of my life. So, so I, I did not pray that way. But sometimes uh, I do prayer like for others, that for my family, for my child, for a student who is sick, um, I pray for others, people, and when I or when I teach, and uh, when I in the middle of the retreat and right in the beginning of the retreat, I, I keep very simple prayer. I said, I am starting this morning, like in a, like even in the Facebook, I am I am starting with the my best ability of my good intention, putting giving all my time energy and all the time and energy of all of my students, other people helping me to do this wonderful uh, so social work, I consider this. And uh, may this benefit to everybody who is listening. May this heal them. May they understand easier. May they connect with that. May they apply the practice. Those who apply practice, may they realize something fr from this. and. Uh, May they bring more sense of peace and joy and clarity and direction in their life. Those prayers I do. And I definitely believe by praying that it will bring more than anything. It's not me. And it's not like just what I have to say or I have to teach or it's not my ego thing. My just simple prayer may these teaching help. I believe so much that this has a power uh, to help. So, so in that sense, you know, I truly, truly believe. And I, yes, I said yesterday, I think it's a kind of important reason, which I never thought of it before, is I thought it was interesting, but just came out, is the reason why prayer is important also, when we pray, when we pray, I don't know if you remember anybody, if you remember what I said about why prayer is important, on last Tuesday, go ahead and write me. I'll see if you remember or not. Okay, so uh, while you are writing, and I will, what I will say is, I will, I, what I said was that when we pray, we we acknowledge there is something beyond me. When I'm praying, there's something beyond me. It's not what I what I prepared. I, I, I prepared pages, what I wanted to speak today. Uh, I got up six in the morning um, and uh, read the questions, read the comments, and uh, th thought about what I should say today and to, to, to kind of lay out, just have a little bit kind of uh, pre preparation. None of those are really important. You know, they are important but not that important. But that those are things that I prepare. And I, I, my conceptually, I think about it, reflect. I use my intelligence and my awareness, but something beyond that, that is not on my hand. There are enlightened beings. There are the universal uh, force, the wisdom. There is a collective connection. There is a, there is a collective intelligence. There is a lot of things out there. Uh, there are many unknown forces. So I'm praying to all of those, saying that may I'm going beyond my ego, I'm praying, I'm, I'm accepting my, beyond me, I'm praying whoever is out there, just, I trust all of you, help me. Inner Refuge help me, all the Refuge Tree help me, all the Guardians, Angel Protectors help me, all, all the collective energy of the Cyber Sangha help me. All the intelligence of the universe help me. That is the prayer. Going beyond my ego, that's important. 
reaching out there for help. That's important. There was a, they said there was a study that people who were very stressed out, very stressed out, and um, in life, a lot of problems, a lot of pain, a lot of stress, and going through a lot of challenges. And people, of course, the stress is not good, but people who went out, seek for help, and give even moment when they are feeling challenges in their own life, when they went out and help others, these people, uh, they, uh, they did not die because of their stress. Or die. Their, their life span was much longer than people who just felt stress, who did not go out for ask for help, or neither they went to help others in those situations. So going out from that pain and ego, seeking help and ability to do that, I think is very, very important for everybody. So the prayer has something very much to do with the transcending fear and ego and seeking higher support. So, okay, I think that's all for now. And uh, I think um, we, are, we are running out of time uh, this time. So I, I will, I think, end here. And uh, thank you very much, everybody. And thank you very much, all the people uh, who has been diligently participating, practicing, sharing beautiful comments and, uh, and inspiring other people and sharing, um, opening your uh, social media door for, for, for me, for us and uh, uh, allowing to channel these uh, teaching through your media friends, social friends and uh, kind of, uh, you know, it, again, even that I think uh, it's what you're doing is a great help because it's also, um, you know, you're not telling anybody to do anything, but everybody have an option to do. So I think that have option to attend and listen. And I think it's just fantastic that I was, I think again and again about the Facebook Live. Uh, it's so different from when you are in the set of the retreat and the teaching in, in the meeting with people where you don't want people to walk in the room. You don't want people to walk out the room. You don't want people to talk too loud. You don't want people to sit in a particular respectful position. You don't want our people to ask too many questions. Uh, you don't want to interfere the flow of the group. Uh, there's a lot of conditions when you are in, in a conference room and retreat settings. Here is a, a free. It's a free. You sit the way you wanted to sit. Ask what you want to ask. Make comments what you wanted to drop in when you wanted to drop in. Leave when you wanted to leave. Come in when you wanted to come in. It's such a this sense of freedom. Uh, of course, I cannot drop in and out like you 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 can, but I I am committed. And of course, I can drop any time I wanted to too. So it's a wonderful experience. A lot of freedom here. Thank you so much again, and we'll see you. Um, um, next Tuesday, so I will be, right now I'm in California, and then next uh, next week I will be traveling to Europe, so I will be a whole um, month in Europe, and in, uh, in, uh, Paris, Vienna, Berlin, Amsterdam, Buell, and um, yeah, so I look forward to seeing all the people who are attending those uh, teachings, and uh, will continue next Thursday, same time. Thank you very much.